warning, some viewers may find this content disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Awaken me from my slumber. Matt Harvey from Deep Woods Paranormal Podcast. This is always good to team up with you to figure out what is occurring with the dogman phenomenon. <laughs> Now that I am revamped, recharged, and ready to rumble, it is time for Matt Harvey and myself to take a walk into the darkness. <laughs> Creatures of the night, yes, welcome back to another episode of Midnight Lycanthropy here on Star Fox Radio. Our host tonight is a good friend of mine as well as an ally of the North American Dogman Project. His name is Matt Harvey. How are you doing tonight, my friend? I'm doing good. Well, thank you very much for having me on. I appreciate it. Yeah, for sure. You've been quite busy as myself, so it's definitely good to get a chance to link up. And if you'd like to give the audience basically a little plug as to what you do and who you are, that'd be great. Yeah, my wife and I explore everything paranormal from Bigfoot to ghosts to hauntings to dogman to UFOs to pretty much anything paranormal in nature. And uh, so we're in the process of shooting our own show called Exploring the Unknown with Matt and Amanda. And uh, so that's what we've been doing. We have our own YouTube channel and Rumble channel. Uh, we also have a podcast, the Deep Woods Paranormal Podcast, uh, where we also talk about mainly Bigfoot now, because that's what our, most of our fans are into. But we do occasionally talk about uh, Dogman and stuff. And we've had the pleasure of having Kenny on and uh, him talking about different things here in Texas. And uh, so, yeah, it's, 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 it's been cool. Um, cool experience. Appreciate the kind words, my friend. And yeah, that sounds excellent. It's definitely important to have visuals such as yourself that dive into other aspects as to what's occurring. Because, I mean, I definitely pay attention and people share things with me, but I honestly only document Dogman and only, you know, put my effort into trying to comprehend that. And I usually always try to make sure to, I shouldn't say usually, I always do make sure to forward on people that have other questions to individuals such as yourself. So it's always a definitely good plug to have aligned with us for sure man so what are your thoughts in general i guess as to potentially what's occurring or down your way because you got the texas triangle dogman triangle you got all kinds of interesting stuff occurring down there yeah there's definitely a lot of paranormal activity here in texas i've been seeing ufos lately which i'd never seen ufos that much um, i had two encounters before i moved here and i've had four or five since in the last five years um bigfoot Bigfoot's very, very popular here uh, and unpopular, <laughs> depending on who you're talking to. Uh, most of East Texas is just full of Bigfoot stories. And then also Dogman goes with that, too. Uh, people tell me about Dogman experiences and, of course, El Chupacabra. Uh, so, I mean, Dogman could be El Chupacabra, too. Maybe it's a, like a younger uh, Dogman going in and stealing chickens. Who knows? It's always been something I've wondered about down here but uh i have a friend 
who uh, messaged me, and he's big into all kinds of uh, scary movies, and he and his his daughter and and her friends um, really like that stuff, and so he's best his best friend has a daughter as well, and they watch scary movies. So he was telling me, and he's he's like high up in the military. I can't. He asked me not to tell his name or anything like that. He wanted anonymity. But <clears throat> anyways, he was up in an area not far from where I, I uh, work, and there's a Foster Farms plant out there, right? So what I found out, and Bigfoots have been spotted in this area too. Uh, not as not you know a lot, but just every once in a while they're seen. And uh, one of the jobs that the, the guys have out there is to take the chickens out into the forest and leave them in a pile there because they think the, the wildlife will eat them or whatever. And so he said he walked out one day, um, or he, he and his daughter were out one day. Uh, they had just watched a scary movie, and it was like the middle of the night, and they were bored. And so they went out towards a cemetery out towards uh, what's called Hearn, Texas. And they were out on a road out there, just an old gravel road uh, near a cemetery. And they were going to go explore the cemetery. And they heard like a barking and a howling. And he just thought it was some kind of a coyote or maybe even a wolf. And so he, you know, he's a non-believer. He, he didn't really think anything of it until he looked over and he saw something standing up on its back legs. About his height, he's about over six feet tall. And he, he just saw these red glowing eyes looking back at him. And all of a sudden it went down on all fours and, and uh, started charging him. He said it just looked like a giant wolf. And uh, so he put his daughter back in the car. He got in the car and told his friend to take off and they took off. So I have not been out to that location yet. It's a location I want to go. But he said, you know, if you don't, if you go out there, make sure you're well armed. Because whatever that was, he said it was just, it looked like a werewolf is what he said. So that's one account I've heard of. Um, very, very creepy. I mean, imagine you're a non-believer and all of a sudden this thing's charging you down. And you're like, what in the heck is that thing? And uh, that had to be had been scary. And so he went back the next day. He couldn't find any signs of it, uh, any tracks or anything, because it's, it's, the dirt's out there. It's pretty dry. And uh, so, yeah, he didn't see any signs, but it would be interesting to go up there and see if we could find some maybe some hair samples or whatever. And that's really close to where the cemetery is on the other side of where they drop the, uh, the chicken, the dead chickens. So out here, Bigfoot and, and Dogman are usually pretty close together. They're usually in, in uh, groups that are, are very close to each other. So from what I've understood, but uh, a lot of people out here talk about Dogman and they are freaked out about it. They don't go into certain parts of the woods, uh, and if they do, they're they're well armed when they go in, and they're ready for a fight if they ever go into there. They never go alone. So about half of Texas, what people don't realize is half of Texas, well, actually more than half of Texas, is just woodlands. It's it's very wooded out here, and uh, there's a lot of places people haven't explored. So I mean, it's very possible for a dog man or a, Bigfoot or even some kind of giant primate to be hiding out there or a giant canine. So who knows? But uh, the more I research it, the more questions I have pretty much, whether it's Bigfoot or Dogman. And I've talked to you quite a bit about it, too. Uh, and you sent me all those reports, which were crazy as well. And uh, so, yeah, I just the more the more I look into it, the more questions I have about it. Uh, yeah, it's it's a very interesting subject. Uh, let me just put it this way. I would not want to meet a dog man in a in a dark alley <laughs> by myself without being armed, at least at least having a chance to fight it off. But, but uh, yeah, just insane. Those things are are big and scary. And and like I said, I wouldn't want to run into one without some kind of protection. But uh, I think it'd be interesting. I think it'd be very interesting to have an encounter where it was not like aggressive or where it was just like, oh, hey, I didn't know you were there uh, on both accounts, my account and its account. And just to get to see one and to see what they really look like and to kind of start to form an opinion of what I think it is from there. 
But, uh, you know, I've seen all those prints that people have casted. You've casted quite a few prints and have pictures of quite a few very large prints. And it makes me wonder what that could possibly be. That is just some straight up nightmare fuel right there. And I appreciate you elaborating on that and sharing. And that's the point and reason you're here is to speak, my friend. So I actually wanted to touch base on something real quick because I don't watch horror movies. I only watch like creature features. So if your friends like those, I actually I'll remind me later to they're all free links on YouTube, but they're actually solid creature feature horror movies that I watch that are some nightmare fuel. So I'll toss those over to you and also what I was going to say is a lot of people don't realize that blood has a ton of nutrients. So every animal eats blood. OK, and if you look at like a lot of predators, they don't even really like I mean, like eat it. But things that we eat for steak and such and consider quality meats, predators tend to like the organs first and blood and et cetera. So I actually have a hypothesis that a lot of those chupacabra type sightings where they're finding those animals, I think what's happening is that animal hasn't had a chance to finish eating what it was eating and that it's been disrupted meaning the ranchers or somebody else has come outside or turned the lights on fired at it potentially scared it off because as stated even a house cat is going to drink blood uh, meaning you know when we've cooked burger before and such and there were some stray kitties around there i would take some of that extra you know griddle or whatever that i cooked up and i'd mix it in with the cat food that i got for the stray cat she'd love that stuff so i think sometimes people tend to just overlook the common behaviors of natural animals and such and maybe take it as like a paranormal aspect when like i just stated that's really normal behavior right there and you had also elaborated on some of the images where like jody cook was saying he doesn't really understand why everyone gets so worked up about the purple mangy looking like dog and like i sent it to you and you were stating that that's pretty common down there and it is a known animal and yes it's got mange and some issues so how do you feel about all that yeah i definitely think that from what i've been told that people you know the organs have not just minerals and stuff but they're they're very high in uh in things that an animal needs to uh basically grow and stuff like that and continue to be able to move around uh i've been told that uh, usually the alpha dog if they're it's a, it's a dog pack or any kind of a pack the alpha animal will always get the first shot at the organs because it has more uh like you were saying vitamins and minerals and things that it needs for it to sustain itself and uh speaking of blood you know, like if you have a hamburger, you're going to have blood in it. Most steak, most most uh, most of the stuff, any kind of meat that's red is going to still have blood in it. Uh, because what happens is over time, I used to work in the meat department, blood will actually die. And that's why meat turns white. But uh, mm-hmm. if you see red red meat, that's usually a good thing, uh, meaning that it has it's full of blood. The muscle's still full of blood. And we eat that all the time, too, that people don't realize that it has all those good qualities in it. But, yeah, there's there's a lot of reports of, of dog men out here. I haven't seen a lot. I've, I've only talked to three different accounts, uh, and I think two of them that you sent me. But I have talked to people from other places about it, and uh, they do seem to frequent, like, farms and stuff like that. And that makes sense because if you can take down a livestock, uh, basically – you know, grab a grab a cow. I mean, how, imagine how much food that is, and how, imagine if you can get to the organs, and how nutrient rich and vitamin rich all that would be for an animal. Uh, and they're just easy pickings, like cows. If you could take down a cow, I mean, they're four or five hundred pounds or more, especially out here, and uh, that would probably feed you for a week or so. Especially if you could drag the carcass off and put it somewhere where basically no other animal would basically eat it up before you could get a chance to eat again off of it. Uh, A lot of predatory animals do that. They'll take and they'll eat certain pieces of the animal and then like, like cats, they'll stash, they'll stash the carcasses up in a tree. So that, that makes sense that they, you know, they're, they're going after those organs and stuff like that. And uh, the meats are like secondary because that blood probably holds in there for quite a bit of time and keeps that meat somewhat fresh, uh, probably two or three days. I mean, if you look at the meat that you get from the stores, 
that meat's probably three or four days old by the time it even gets to the store. But it's still in big chunks, and then they slice it up, and it's still good for another you know, four or five days, usually, unless you freeze it. But, yeah, I mean, there's, like I said, out here, I mean, I've heard, I've heard stories, but uh, I've never actually seen one out here, thank God. Uh, I've had a lot of strange encounters out in the woods, but I've never, most of it's been Bigfoot basically associated, uh, where I've had multiple Bigfoot encounters. Now, that's not to say that some of those things couldn't also be Dogman. Like at Joe's camp, we found what looked like three giant fingernails had been drugged down the front of a tree about eight or nine feet up. So imagine, you know, your shoulder level where your hand goes down to and you just kind of raise your hand about shoulder level. So add another foot or two maybe for whatever height that animal was. Now, we always just associated with Bigfoot, but in the back of my head, I'm always going, okay, what if it isn't Bigfoot? What if it could be like a dogman type creature that is also in this area? Because he lived over in the Sabine National Forest, and that borders, he's on the border of Texas and uh, Louisiana. So it, it always made me wonder if maybe they had, he had dogman there too, you just never saw him. But uh Imagine whatever that was. These claws were, it was deep. It was like an inch deep into the tree and maybe two or three inches apart. So whatever it was, was big. Now, I don't know if Bigfoots have long claws. People say they have long claws. I don't think they do. I think they're more like a human. I think they have more like human-like fingers or more like a primate fingers, like a gorilla or a, or any kind of primate like that would have. They don't have those long fingernails. But dogmen, I imagine, do. I imagine they do have longer fingernails because uh, if I mean I have five dogs, I look at my dogs, they all have those long fingernails, and I imagine it, their paw being, you know, my biggest dog being maybe ten times bigger, scratching that tree. I mean that that totally is possible, especially if you had a little bit of a sharpness to your fingernails. So uh, we had somebody look at it, and they they uh, some guy from the wildlife rush. Uh, agency and he, he couldn't tell us what it was he was just kind of dumbfounded <laughs> he's like that looks like a human did it i'm like how would a human do that he's like with a knife i'm like okay i don't think anybody come on to joe's camp but you never know i mean he's his camp is out in the middle of nowhere and uh he, he had neighbors but i don't think his neighbors would come over and do something like that in the middle of the night so but yeah just it's just very interesting that the whole idea that a werewolf-like creature a very large dog could be out there uh and then i've also had conversations with um military personnel and they've confirmed that things like that are out there in fact one guy told me if you actually knew what was in the woods nobody would ever go into the woods so <laughs> like i don't think he was trying to scare me but he was trying to you know give me a quick heads up he said you know use ultraviolet um rays when you go out there use a camera that can see ultraviolet which we have one it's called a full spectrum camera that's on the opposite end of the ir side uh and uh, we kind of see somewhere in the middle so ir is on the right and then the um uv um or sorry uh, ultraviolet light is on the left and then in the middle is where we see we kind of we don't see both ir or ultraviolet anymore for some reason but uh, supposedly if you go into that uh, ultraviolet kind of lighting, you will see things that you can't see with your own eyes. He described it. Have you ever seen the movie Predator where it's cloaked and it's kind of looks like a almost like a mirror? Ultraviolet side of things, supposedly you can you can see these things. You can see things that aren't there. Yeah, no, that's all some very super interesting stuff for sure. And actually, I have a couple things to add to that there actually is a claw that was sent to jody cook from texas that we have on file i'll put it up in the video so you can see it too where something large was digging into some bark on a tree and we we're able to get a claw out of it and it's not been able to be verified as anything that should be in the area etc and a lot of people also don't realize as i was saying i do believe 
dire wolves, short faced bears, baboons like the Danopithecus, yellow baboons, as well as yeah. dire wolves are still popping around. And all those have massive claws too. People don't realize. I mean, hyenas burrow into the ground. They have some gnarly claws. Bears can shred you up. So, yeah, any sort of predator is going to have artillery to work with. But also, a lot of people sometimes forget as to the aspect of what like i said predators do and how they act so meaning people for example will want to go out and hunt coyotes or remove groundhogs woodchucks from their yard because it's destroying their garden etc but the thing is those animals are just doing like what an animal is supposed to do okay humans have decided to encroach on them and now because of that we end up disposing of them okay well keep in mind animals are intelligent so a farm stead is basically like going to the grocery store for you and i so why would a wolf or a coyote or any sort of known predator that we do know exist why would they not come and just pluck away at livestock i mean that's simple as heck chickens aren't the most intelligent goats are really unintelligent sheep are not intelligent and cows are dumb as hell too man so they're all super easy pluckings man and like i said it's just like going to the meat market so instead of having to chase down a wild caribou that could take you hours maybe or days to catch up with it depending why not just go to the farmstead reach over snag some chickens or hop over and snag some chickens and boom so it makes logical sense and people don't seem to understand that animals are intellectual and they take the path of least resistance meaning if there is a water source they're not going to walk around it when they can tread through it so same thing why are they going to expel energy when they can get food much easier large cats for example especially tigers dude they're only active for like four to five hours a day man the rest of the time they're sleeping and preserving their energy and etc so again why with a tiger that needs to preserve that energy if that tiger can walk over and snag someone's livestock of course it's going to Exactly. And what people don't realize is the center of the country is, is full of farms. I mean, here in Texas, I mean, I mean, my my work is in right in the middle of a farm, in the middle of farmland. I mean, so, yeah, I mean, there's just there's farms everywhere out here, especially in East Texas. It's very fertile. You know, Oklahoma, Kansas, uh, Missouri, South Dakota, this area is all very big farmland. There's a lot of cattle out here. Uh, so, I mean, it's just in, in other wildlife, I'm sure. I mean, there's there's easy pickings with possums and uh, Raccoons, all kinds of animals everything, out man. here. Exactly. And they get huge out here. Holy crap. Yeah. I mean, I, I saw an owl. If I didn't have two other people witness it with me, I wouldn't have believed it was real. Because we pulled over. I'm like, okay, you guys all saw that, right? So you've seen a barn owl or whatever, right? The white owls, they're they're about a foot and a half tall. They're a pretty good size, and they're usually about yeah. They got eight, glowing red eyes too. Yeah. Yeah, eight or ten inches wide, right? So they're they're you know a little bit bigger than a, like a professional football. And I've seen bigger ones than that out here, but I've never seen anything as big as this. I we were driving down the road, a country road. And I look up and I'm like, what the heck? This a, they're like, the crew even said, watch out for that dog in the middle of the road. And then all of a sudden this dog's head like turns like, like a dog sitting and the dog's head turns around and it's a damn owl and it's got a mouse hanging out of its, out of its, out of its beak. I'm like, holy crap. But this thing was got to be almost two feet tall and it had to be almost a foot, a foot wide. I mean, it was massive. It was the biggest owl I've ever seen. It looked like a penguin is what it looked like. I mean, if my 40, 50 pound dog was sitting on sitting on his butt with his paws out down and then basically turn its head around, that's basically what it looked like. I'm like, what the hell? You know, so this is not something that Joe used to talk about, too, is that the animals out where he lived are much, much bigger. Like the squirrels are two or three times the size of normal squirrels. They're not little. They're big. Yeah, I got a pet squirrel, uh, man, so I can only yeah. imagine. I, I mean, I feed her, so she's big, but all her yeah. little buddies outside are, that I feed, too, they're definitely super cool. And, and the raccoons are much bigger, and the possums are much bigger, and stuff like that. I pulled the poss- uh, uh, raccoon out of the road that had been hit, and uh, I think it survived, but I pulled it out of the road. It was it was almost as big as, as a like 30, 40-pound dog. I mean, he was bigger than some of my dogs that I have. So, I mean, they get big out here. I think they live much older, too, because I think they're not hunted as much. But, I mean, it just imagine, I mean, 
imagine a dog man out here. I mean, they have free reign. I mean, it would be very hard for them to be, uh, number one, probably seen out here if they're stealthy, which I'm sure they are. If an animal out here doesn't want to be seen, you're probably not going to see it. And then number two, I mean, it's just food galore out here. I mean, just pickings. You know, I could go out in the wilderness and live off the land out here easily. I mean, there's just there's just food everywhere out here. So, and then you mentioned the farms. I mean, add the farms in. I mean, yeah, it's it's pretty easy pickings out here. I mean, everywhere you look, there's cows and stuff like that. And then of course they're giving out free food at the you know the uh, chicken plant where they're just leaving carcasses out there. Yeah, that's probably not the smartest. I mean, that's like a good way to definitely encourage individuals and predators to come into your area and act right. in ways that they yeah. probably shouldn't. And people yeah. also don't realize bald eagle chicks, okay, not even a full-grown bald eagle, they have enough power in their claws to snap the back of a decent-sized caribou. Not a full adult, oh. but that's just to show how strong, like I said, animals are. And again, I think people tend to forget that sometimes and also Mm -hmm. texas and all across the country there's a ton of cave systems okay and a lot of people again don't realize that the short-faced bear for example spent almost 90 percent of its time in the caves meaning it would come out and get its food and such but then it would go back into the caves and roam all around and live in there so think in these areas where people are missing whether it's a cave hyena or short-faced cave bear or baboons that live in cave systems and other areas just like anything else to travel around they could easily snag you and pull you up in there and there's really no way for somebody to ever like find you so it's definitely pretty interesting yeah definitely and there's texas has a big missing population too people go out hiking in the woods and then they don't come back so who's to say you know, dog man's not grabbing them while they're out there. And uh, I've heard stories of basically dog man hunting people where hunters go out into the wilderness and they are essentially going out looking for deer or whatever. And they hear rumblings and they hear like scratching, like something scratching the tree barks. Um, kind of like I was talking, we were talking about the, the handprint before. And then essentially they, uh, you know, all of a sudden they see a head pop out around the corner and then these dog men are giving chase. So, you know, these people are armed and they'll fire at them and that usually stops them from continue to chase them. But these, you know, these guys are out in the, in the wilderness away from everything. Uh, there's a lot of people that hunt that I know of and they go out into places that people aren't. And, uh, so yeah, that they've had some, some of them have had Bigfoot encounters. I don't think anybody's ever told me about a dog man encounter. Uh, but they've definitely told me about Bigfoot encounters where the deer, they come in and they'll pick up their deer and walk off with it. But they're <laughs> like, what the hell? And they go to shoot it and they look at it and it's like, nope, I'm not shooting that. But, uh, yeah, I mean, dog man, I mean, they could be responsible for some of these, you know, 411 missing people, especially here in Texas. Oh, yeah. 100%, my friend. And also, again, a lot of people don't realize that the average hunter has a very weak caliber weapon, okay? Meaning that if you go to areas where I'm not a hunter, I just know this from others, I'm a huge animal lover, so I can never hunt. But either way, people that have to go to Africa and areas like that that want to hunt massive predators, you have to have certain specs on your ammunition just to even be allowed out there, meaning that you have to have high-powered weaponry. So the average is out hunting a deer. That's why do you, I mean, I've seen grizzly bears. Sure, if someone got that right shot, drop, okay? But almost eight out of 10 times, I've seen grizzly bears take five, six shots sometimes, circle back around, still trying to get you, meaning that the caliber of the weapon tree isn't meant for what you're trying to hunt. Whereas if you had military spec weapons, you're going to be able to smoke like a hyena or a bear or something like that. But like I said, if you and I are hunting, the average hunter has just kind of like a crappy rifle, man, where that <laughs> is like... yeah not meant for doing anything else besides the deer is hunting so if it comes across a sasquatch or a grizzly bear or a dog man or something or a siberian tiger it's not going to do anything to it and i mean i've used this example before over in russia where that gentleman came across a siberian tiger shot it stole its boar went back to his cabin when he came back to his cabin the tiger had followed him back he saw it outside 
He ended up leaving to his friend's house because he was afraid. Once he thought the tiger had left, he came back. The tiger destroyed his cabin, took the boar meat that he had had up in there and literally just destroyed everything. The guy saw it was waiting outside. He shot it again, ran off. And then a couple days later, the tiger waited at the trailhead, knowing that the gentleman had to go down to the market to get food because he always traveled that way, and he ended up getting them. So this tiger had been shot like three separate times and also had the audacity enough to come back and be ticked off that, A, you stole its food, and B, you shot at me to get you, okay? I mean, and again, I'm a firm believer all animals are intellectual, but that just shows you an example right there of, A, what an animal can endure, and also, B, what it's capable of to comprehend, you know? Yeah, definitely. It's, that's crazy. Um, yeah, I've heard of Bigfoots being shot by shotguns, and the bullets, the fur was so thick that it was almost like the, the bullets just the, I think they shot him with bird shot. Yeah, the, that's nothing, the, man. The, People can survive right, that stuff, dude, yes. Right. It didn't even penetrate the fur. Yeah, it wouldn't on a grizzly chase, bear either. You're just going to kick it yeah, off. Ch- chase this person for however long before they got inside a structure, and then the Bigfoot, like, harassed them for a while and then finally went away. But, yeah, I mean, just you have to have a, a heavy-duty weapon if you're going to try and take down, let's say, an 800-pound animal like that, and whether it's a dog man or a Bigfoot or anything out here. A lot of hunters do carry heavy-duty weapons, but... I mean, like Joe used to carry around a 454 just because he was afraid of the Bigfoots. And then after I kind of, we kind of worked together for a while, he actually stopped carrying a gun. He wasn't afraid to, I mean, he wasn't afraid anymore and, yeah, and stuff. So, but yeah, I mean, Dogman, that's completely opposite. I would never not have some kind of, some kind of weapon that was big enough to maybe at least stop it in its tracks, if not put it down. So. Yeah, no, I mean, that all makes logical sense for sure. And actually, before we let you get back to what you're doing, I just wanted to ask you one more question. So the weapon you just named, for example, I mean, there was a crocodile that was named Gustav, for example, that still no one really knows if it was ever killed or what happened to him, but he had supposedly eaten a ton of people. And that thing had been shot so many times. It had been shot by military boats that had like huge weapons on it and you could see the pock marks and scars all over this crocodile so say for example your friend who had that weapon say he came across a 20 23 25 foot saltwater crocodile that weapon's not going to do crap to that either is it well yeah you have to hit them in a specific place to kill a crocodile you have to hit them like right in the middle of their skull yes uh, so I mean, you so have if you to got know that where shot, to shoot. Okay. Yeah. But if you hit him, like say in the tail or like the side, it's probably not going to do much, right? It would probably probably tear a hole. That's a big bullet. Okay. And especially if it's a hollow point. Okay. It would prob- probably leave a hole, but I don't know if it. Exactly. Large of an it could animal. still come back and get you. <laughs> yeah. So that's what I'm trying to, I guess, just get out to people is that even yeah. if you get a good shot on something it could still yes that animal could still pass away but there's numerous tales of people shooting bears and then the bear circles around behind them and when they're still looking right. for the bear they end up finding the blood path of how it circled behind them and it was getting ready to ambush them but it bled out before it had a chance to meaning that yes that was still planning on getting you so even though technically you might fatally wound an animal it still has a high probability of getting you as well so, you know Right. And that's why when I go Bigfooting, I I might be carrying, but I don't ever, I will never pull my gun on it. I will do everything else that I can before I, I, I pull a weapon because, number one, I just don't want to hit somebody else or something like that. Yes, of course. And number two, I mean, even if I do hit this thing with a little 9 millimeter, I mean, I'd have to hit it in the face or something to actually cause. That's what I'm saying, like in the eyes or something. Yeah. Depends on how big it is. I mean, you'd have to hit it somewhere, maybe in the foot, to slow it down. But and I've even heard just... of Kodiak grizzly bears taking shots to their skull, man, like numerous times, dude. And like the skull was just so dang big that, like I said, the caliber of the bullet couldn't penetrate the skull, man, because it's just massive. Exactly. Yeah, you got to be really careful when you go out to these places. You have to have a plan. You have to know what you're gonna do. You got to have everybody on the same page. If you have multiple people with you, because I go out by myself sometimes in these locations looking for bigfoots, and I've never had an issue. I've had close encounters, but I've never had an issue. 
Now, Dogman is completely something else. I mean, they, they're supposed to be way more aggressive. And uh, so we both know somebody that had a close encounter with one. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that's I mean, that's scary. That scares me. Bigfoot scared me a little bit. Um, but the dog man, I mean, perfect, my friend. Thanks for <laughs> popping in tonight, investing some of your time here in the Fox Den with myself and the audience, and really giving us some cool insight as to what's occurring down south. Because I am up in the northeast near Canada, I am in Maine, but pretty close to Canada, eh? So it's always good to definitely uh, get some information from you, man. So I look forward to collaborating again soon. Yeah, that was awesome. Well, thank you for having me on, and uh. I'll keep you posted. Next time, I'll have a little bit more information on some different cases that I know of, uh, and we can talk more about that. Thank you for everyone who once again stopped by tonight for another episode of Midnight Lycanthropy here on Star Fox Radio. If you do enjoy my content, please like, subscribe, and share it. Feed the algorithm, and I will see you on the next one.